Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Would you believe it's been almost two years since Associated released this car, the B7 buggy? And there haven't been very many updates since then, just a few running changes to fix some of the small flaws in the original production run. Well, now, thanks to the introduction of the T7 and ST7 trucks, there are some changes ahead. And here they are. On the left, we have the updated steering parts to allow zero kingpin inclination and on the right we have the three gear transmission. So in this video I'm going to see what these parts are like, get them installed and try and work out if there's any difference whatsoever. So let's start off by looking at what I think is the simpler of the two new releases to get your head around. It is the version 2 caster and steering blocks and the uh, main thing about this as far as I'm concerned, is that it gives you a zero KPI steering block setup using the new style of steering block that has more camber link position adjustments because it uses a vertical ball stud on the outer camber link. Uh, Associated also say in their blurb that these have also been made a bit stronger. So we'll do a little comparison between this and the uh, original ones. Now, if you've watched any of my earlier videos about the B7, you'll know that I switched across to the zero KPI steering parts from the B6 series. I did that quite a while ago, and it's something that's become almost universal amongst the team drivers since then. I'm not gonna claim that I started the trend because I saw it in a team driver's car myself. So uh, I copied them and I liked it. Broadly speaking, in my opinion, it adds sharpness and precision to the steering feel. It makes the turn in a bit sharper. Uh, and takes away a little bit of the mid corner. Overall, I've just found that the car is a lot easier to place on the track using the zero KPI hubs, uh, and that's really applied in, in all conditions. Uh, and Associated now have a proper option to add it using the new style parts. So let's see what you do get in the bag. I think I'll pop those to one side for a moment because the most interesting thing is these. These are the five sets of steering blocks that you get. And looking at the markings, that should be KPI three, KPI two, but I think there might be a surprise here. No, it's still KPI two, okay. KPI zero, these are the ones that we're interested in. And you should be able to see there as well. See how it reads 4L, the other one says 4R. It's four millimeters trail which is the distance between the center of the axle and the pivot point there for the steering block. And four millimeters is the, the standard setting on a B7. Um, and I think we can see just about without taking it off the sprue, should be able to make out that these two pins are aligned. They're directly opposite each other. Whereas if we look at something like the KPI three, I say pins, I mean pivots, you should be able to see that the pivots have got quite a lot of offset. Uh, and that's how they generate the KPI by offsetting the uh, pivot points so that you have more angle there, um, which creates that, that change in inclination as you steer the buggy around. But yes, so these are the ones that we are interested in, uh, the KPI zero option. Put those here. Let's see what else you get in the pack. KPI one, yep, that's the KPI one like we got in the previous pack. KPI zero, but with the three L with the three millimeter trail. So here's the new part. This is the one that we want to fit. The other bit that goes hand in hand with this is the bit I put to one side a moment ago, which is the new C hub, which apparently has been reinforced. Uh, and while we're working on the car and fitting the new gearbox, at the same time, I'll also pop these uh, zero KPI steering parts on so that we can get the car fully up to date. Second new part, and perhaps the one that is more interesting overall, is this new three gear gearbox conversion kit. Now, as you probably know, the B5 was released with a five gear gearbox. 
the main intention being to move the motor quite a long way forward compared to the three gear gearboxes that had been used in all the mainstream cars prior to then. Um, but let me start off by saying what this three gear gearbox conversion isn't. This is not the gearbox that Associated took to the World Championships in Australia earlier this year. Those cars, if the uh, photos are to be believed, were pieced together with a hybrid of V6 gearboxes and uh, various other different suspension parts to make the whole thing work and fit together and be under 250 mils wide. This is not that gearbox. This uses a extra large idler gear so that it is a, effectively a direct replacement for the five gear gearbox. But we'll get this uh, built up and we will compare with the original gearbox and see what differences there are. Let's first of all just uh, open up the bag and see what you get. Price is around 60-ish pounds in the UK. So not cheap, but to be fair, not too expensive when you consider that you've got aluminium mounts included for the suspension, one of them at least, uh, which cost about 30 pounds on their own anyway, uh, plus a variety of other parts here. New gearbox casings, the new extra large idler gear, parts to mount the uh, differential in, and a few little metal parts. As I mentioned, the new brace for the suspension arms, uh, some bearings, and some screws, and so on. So everything is here to build up the gearbox. Uh, next job, I suppose, is to get the screwdrivers out and get started. Now, obviously, there's no differential, no spur shaft. None of those parts are included in the three-gear conversion kit. So the whole of the five gear gearbox is going to need to come out so we can partially strip it down. Uh, but before we do that, we'll also do some comparison measurements. Now that we've got everything in bits, it seems like a good opportunity to see which parts are new in the three gear gearbox and which parts are shared. So to the left here, we have all the parts required to assemble the original five gear gearbox. And on the right here, we have all the parts required to assemble the new three gear gearbox. As you can probably tell, obviously for the five gear, the gearbox housings go, as does the gearbox top. Also, you lose the eccentric holders for the diff bearings. Also, you lose the C block. And of course, you lose the three small idlers, which is what makes it a five gear transmission. Moving over to the right, for the three gear transmission, you get, of course, two new lower housings for the gearbox. You get a new top cap for the gearbox, and the top cap uses a horizontal screw to hold in at the top rather than the vertical screw of the five gear gearbox which ended up threading into a gap between two plastic parts, so it wasn't very sturdy. So that looks like an improved design straight away. Also, obviously on the three gear gearbox, you get the large idler, you get this special shaft for the idler to mount on, plus two new bearings for the idler, a few different screws. You get a new C block, which has a slightly slimmer profile at this point, to allow clearance for the new large idler. Also, this C block doesn't have the slots in it, which is part of the ongoing improvements to the B7. My older C block here does have slots in it, and right in the early days of the B7, they did tend to break a little bit too easily for some people. Uh, the other thing, of course, that should be mentioned is the diff eccentric housings. These have notches in them for some reason. They seem quite similar in dimension. I assume the notch is just to make them a little bit more secure in the gearbox itself for a bit more precision. Obviously, all these parts down the middle are shared. The diff, the main lay shaft, the slipper assembly, the motor mount, uh, the upper link camber mount, and of course, the D-block and the rear bumper. 
one of the big questions, of course, about this new gearbox is how much does it move the motor in comparison to the original? So here we have the original uh, five gear gearbox half. Here is the new three gear gearbox half. And I think the best way to compare this is actually just to line these two up side by side. They still use the same set of mounting holes on the bottom. Uh, so they're all kind of lined up. And if you can see on the video, you might get a sense of the difference. Maybe from this angle, it's a little bit clearer. You can see that when the back of the box is lined up, the top of the box here is a one to two millimeters further forward. That aligns quite well with the top shaft. And the same thing again, if we look at the design of the foot at the front, there's a cutaway here of about two millimeters deep, just to keep that same curve around the motor, which means that in effect, changing from five gear to three gear and installing a very large idler gear instead has only moved the motor back by two millimeters. And that's not going to have a huge effect on the weight distribution. It will move the weight back a little bit. We'll see on the scales later on how much difference it really makes, but it's much, much less than the offset you would expect from the gearbox on the old V6 series that they used at the Worlds. Quick note on the new C block. If you've bought an aftermarket C block already for your B7, or if, like me, you've bought Associated's own steel block uh, for the C position, you're not gonna be able to use it with the new gearbox because of this lower clearance. So a couple of quick thoughts on the gearbox after putting it together. It seems nice and free, but I, I never found that the five gear gearbox wasn't free either. Note that the shaft, the special shaft that the big idler goes on is directional. One side is keyed, so make sure you get that into the right side. It's then held in place by screws on each side. Uh, and the other thing to notice is just uh, at the bottom here, I already talked about how the C block is very low profile. You can see there's actually holes in the bottom of the gearbox which the C block will cover over, but that's how close it is on clearance. So that's one to keep an eye on for uh, dirt and, and water ingress over time. More good news is that the alignment issue that affected the holes that these two long screws pass through that hold the D block in pace seems to have been fixed. That's gone together quite cleanly. We'll just top in our time machine now and check the corner weights on the B7. This is my carpet car uh, with fairly standard electronics and nothing particularly unusual about the uh, setup in terms of weight. So we'll see what the weight distribution and total weight is like for this buggy using the five gear gearbox. So with the five gear that's coming in at 14.95 grams with 57% of the weight on the rear axle 43% on the front. And now we'll compare with the weight distribution with the new three gear transmission, just to confirm everything is the same on the car with the exception of changing to that new gearbox. And we've got an overall weight of 1492 grams and still a weight distribution of 57% on the rear axle and 43 on the front, really barely anything in it, a matter of grams either way. Moving on to the new steering blocks now and from taking them off the sprue and having a bit of a closer look, I can see some of the extra strengthening. You can see there's a rib that's been put here on the C-hub to make it a bit stronger. Also, they've covered over where the screw holes are that hold the little uh, Camberlink plate in place. So that's how they've made them more robust. In terms of geometry, I, I can't see any difference uh, between them and the previous ones uh, in terms of uh, positions, um, that's not really a surprise. So it just means that these new zero degree KPI steering blocks are just going to fit vertically in like that. So a fairly straightforward job to just transfer the parts across from the existing B6 steering setup that I've got on the car uh, and put them all in to these new steering blocks and caster blocks. Right, so that's the new steering parts fitted. 
And although I need to go through and adjust the camber and ride height like you would do anytime you make a big change like this, there doesn't seem to be any restrictions on the free movement of the suspension or steering. This looks like it's good to go. So next step is to get this out on the track and see how these parts work in practice. So now that I've got the first run under my belt, what do I think of these new parts from Team Associated? Well, you won't be surprised to hear that my conclusion is that everything went pretty much as expected. I'll start off by talking about the new front hubs. They performed exactly as I expected. They give you zero KPI using the B7 style caster blocks, which of course gives you much more adjustment on the outer position for the camber link. They also have some extra ribs in them to strengthen them. I didn't break any, but to be honest, I didn't break any of the previous version either. As far as I'm concerned, these ones are pretty much a no brainer to pick up if you see them on the shelf. They're stronger and they give you a full range of adjustments. And it goes without saying that these are going to be the new standard setting with zero KPI for all the team associated cars on this platform going forward. Next, let's talk about the three gear gearbox conversion well, guess what? This car was ballistic on the straights. But it's always ballistic on the straights because I run modified and this is a 6.5 turn motor complete with turbo. Was it faster than it would have been with the five gear? It's impossible to say. I didn't do a back to back comparison, but I never had any problems with the speed of the five gear. What I will say is that it was reliable. And as I mentioned already, it seems to have slightly better alignment of the various holes than the five gear gearbox did. In terms of overall weight and weight distribution, there's barely anything in it. It does move the motor back a tiny amount, but not so much that would make a significant difference. It really comes down to whether you feel you might have some kind of advantage from having less idler gears in the drivetrain. I didn't do the testing to prove. I've got no scientific way of proving. It probably comes down to your instinct about whether this is going to improve performance. But again, what I will say is that on this platform, truck or buggy, this gearbox is going to be the one that we're going to see in the future. This is going to be the one that all the setups are going to be based on. And this is going to be the one, if I get my crystal ball out, that we'll see in the B7.1. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them below and I'll try my best to answer. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like button. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider subscribing. As ever, thank you very much for watching.